Okay, folks, we're going to get started. Is everyone settled? Okay, I would like to welcome you to One on One with the Great One. The closest uh, connection I actually have to Wayne Gretzky is that my, my son Lewis's cousin goes to the same high school as Wayne Gretzky's kid <laughs> out in California. So I wanted to just thank you uh, for, uh, for stepping up and uh, being available for our one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have a, like a fireside chat format. So if folks have uh, yeah, I questions. Yeah, see, you see what happens. I, I thought Wayne Gretzky was coming, so I didn't prepare a talk. So um, you, guys, you guys have to tell me what to say. Um, and uh, actually, to uh, help with that, uh, we'll have uh, my microphone on this side of the room. We've got another one Tim's got there on the other side. Um, and if you have a question, we have a line started. But I'm going to jump in first if... Uh, there's nothing preventing us from getting going. Um, so I've been using Perl for a little while, like almost 20, maybe a little more. Me too. Years. Uh, <laughs> not minutes. And uh, uh, every so often, as you know, I was reading some of the early books or teaching a new person a couple of quick scripts or something, I'd run across a phrase, well, this is the language the way Larry wrote it. And if you want it to be different, Go ahead and write another one. So mm -hmm. I've kind of noticed that people have been doing that for about 20-some years. <laughs> yeah. And I was just, the other thing I would hear at the same time is the linguist suggests, you know, go write another language. So I'm thinking, is that like just job security? You figure if there's more languages in the world, you're all set in, the, in case this Perl gig doesn't work out? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, I could do a number of other gigs if this Perl gig doesn't work out. I, I actually... Started out majoring in chemistry and music in uh, college, and uh, studied several other things uh, before I settled on the linguistics and computers. Uh, so, uh, and uh, you know, the last couple of years I've been uh, playing uh, drums in the worship team at my church. So, uh, you know, if, if you need a if you need a jazz drummer at your club, um, <laughs> um, I'm getting okay at that. Uh, but, uh, well, job security, uh, you know, you can't really control how many languages there are going to be or not going to be. Uh, you, you cannot prevent someone from writing a new language if they're determined to. And many people seem to be determined to write a new language, so you might as well get used to it. Uh, uh, you know, I did it. <laughs> I can't blame anybody else for doing it. <laughs> and uh, on the other hand, uh, you know... <laughs> Mots and I get along really well, uh, and uh, and uh, Guido maybe a little less so, but we're all we're all okay with each other. Uh, we, we all know that we're uh, all egomaniacs anyway. So, uh, okay. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I will remind people that will be, or in case you didn't hear me, uh, we'll uh, encourage people to line up along the sides of the room if you have questions. And I uh, found one. Yeah. So um, I'm new. I'm kind of getting into programming. Uh -huh. Why? Why should I choose Perl? <laughs> Beats me. <laughs> uh, if you think like I do, then you you probably will like Perl. If you don't think like I do, you probably won't like Perl. So uh, you know, these these are kind of self-selected folks here. They 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 think Perl is great because they just happen to think kind of like me from time to time. Uh, you know, Perl Perl is uh, a language that um, since I had my training in linguistics as well as computers, 
uh, it, it doesn't work the, the standard way that your, your typical uh, mathematician would design a computer language. Uh, and sometimes that's been a good thing. Sometimes it's been a bad thing. Uh, and uh, I, I'm trying to learn, still, still learning the difference between those. But uh, um, so some of these other languages, they're, they're in some ways cleaner, more like a mathematical formula would be. Uh, Perl was sort of designed to be a little messy the way a natural language is, but you have lots of, lots of words, lots of verbs, lots of ways you can express yourself. So the whole idea of um, uh, there's more than one way to do it, Tim Toady for short, which is kind of my nickname, um, that appeals to some people and it doesn't appeal to other people. Uh, some people like to be told what to do, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Not you guys. <laughs> Yeah. Incidentally, this is a self-portrait of my daughter, Geneva. Uh, she's not here. Uh, her, her little brother is. Uh, Gloria is, uh, he, Lewis is standing in for Gloria, who you, usually uh, goes around with me. Uh, but uh, Gloria, uh, Gloria, not Gloria, this is Geneva. Uh, Geneva is actually uh, expecting at any moment now, so Grandma has to be in Seattle. Uh. So if my phone rings while I'm here and I dash out, you'll know why. Uh, we don't get phone reception here. So. Oh, yeah. No phone reception. Well, I've got, I've got Twitter here somewhere. <laughs> somewhere, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have another question there. Nope, nothing. <laughs> Mr. Larry Wall, you're famous for some of your uh, your comments on the configure script, so I'm I'm curious, <laughs> which of the platforms that Perl no longer builds on or supports do you, do you like the most or alternatively hate the least? Hate the least. Um, hmm. I don't know. All, all of the memorable things were about things I, I I liked the least. So hate the least. I mean, hmm. I I guess uh, what I really I, I kind of liked Solaris when it came along because the the whole idea of configure was to get away back in way back in the dark ages, you know, uh, when people sent C programs around, they they would configure them to go to other machines. They put if def system five or if def BSD, and they then they would work on system five or BSD and nowhere else. Uh, so um, the the idea of configure was to to break that down further. Uh, into feature by feature. So the configure script, uh, you know, figured all that stuff out. And then, um, you know, I guess so my least, least unfavorite would probably be like Solaris because they, like, they, they took uh, System 5 and BSD and went uh, in, into Solaris and then the, fe the features automatically just picked the features that worked and, and so it, it sort of proved my point in a way. Uh, that you didn't have to do it the other way. Uh, so maybe that's, that's, that's a good guess anyway. The Amiga's mine for what it's worth. Oh, the Amiga. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, yeah, but I don't think Configure ever ran on the Amiga, did it? <laughs> I, I, I relied on other people to, con to, uh, to uh, compile Perl for my Amiga. By the way, the, the Amiga 1000 is the first personal computer I ever owned um, uh, because... Before then, the computers that I had at work were always better than anything you could buy. <laughs> Hi, Larry. Um, I've got a question about concurrency and multiple testing, solving this problem on the language level, because previously we tried to solve it on the library level, which is pretty okay, but recently other languages tried to solve it on the language level, mm -hmm. like Erlang before and now Go with the channels and those nice little nifty mm -hmm. operators. Have you thought about this on Perl 6? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the problem with solving it at a library level is that it doesn't actually help if your language uh, does silly things that prevent parallelism. Uh, and to be honest, I did some silly things in the early design of Perl. I uh, made a bunch of things global that really should not have been. Um, and then as we tried to add threading on afterwards, you know, you can't really 
treat globals as thread local. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there are some things you build into a, a language on the semantic level, but beyond that, uh, in terms of Perl 6, our, our approach, because, you know, we, we see what's coming. You know, we're, we're uh, five years ago, it was all one core computers. Now it's two, four, six core computers, and another five, ten years is going to be a thousand cores. Um, so uh, we want uh, Perl to scale up to that. So the uh, the Perl 6 approach, which I don't know how much of this can, can be borrowed back, stolen. <laughs> uh, great art, right? Stolen back. Um, but uh, the Perl 6 idea is that you, you find ways of expressing syntactically natural parallelism. So if you have two arrays and you want to just add things up in parallel, we have a natural way of writing that um, such that the compiler knows if you have multiple cores, it could, could multi-thread it for you. Uh, rather than an explicit threading model, which we'll probably also have, you know, more Java-esque, but um, initially our, our, we're looking for ways of expressing parallelism. There's, there's that kind of um, sort of a vector processing like uh, the old craze used to do or you do in your GPU. Um, the uh, other kinds of parallelism, there's piping. So being able to feed a, a pipe of objects from one thread to another, that's more of an Erlang kind of idea. Um, and other places where, uh, from a language design point of view, the important thing is uh, that you, you're promising you don't care what order things happen. Um, and uh, if, you, if you then write side effects that you know, get you in trouble, then you shouldn't have promised that. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, feel our way into that future and, uh, and uh, trying to make different mistakes this time. Hi, so uh, um, I have a few questions and no one's coming up, so I'll just start and keep going until someone else comes up. But I was curious, uh, <laughs> um, so kind of uh, picking back off of what was just said, um, I'm curious how many different languages you actually program in um, just to get a kind of a feel for them when you're working. Because, I mean, obviously you're working on Perl 6, uh -huh. but a lot of that involves actually having a good language design involves knowing how other languages really try to do something. I'm curious what other languages you've been playing with or if, if you do that. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a funny, kind of a funny question. Um, <laughs> let me take uh, an example that's kind of from... Um, Linguistics. Uh, we we have we had a uh, uh, a talk earlier from uh, 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 um, you know th th there's uh, what we call a polyglot and there's what we call a linguist. Uh, a polyglot knows a lot of languages, and a linguist uh, pretends to know a lot of languages, but just sort of understands how languages work. Uh, so. Uh, you can be a linguist without being a polyglot. Um, at least that's the story. Um, and I, I tend to fall more in that category. Uh, so uh, I, I like been trying to teach myself Japanese for the last six or eight years and kind of succeeding. Um, I know a little bit of German, a little bit of crap classical Greek. I can read classical Greek if I have a dictionary. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I, I'm not really a polyglot uh, in natural languages, I'm, I, but I, I understand a lot about how natural languages work. Um, same thing tends to carry over to the, uh, the uh, computer languages. Um, so uh, I don't do a lot of programming in JavaScript or uh, Python or Ruby. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I rely on my friends to... to you know, steal the ideas from those those things on, on that level. But uh, what I am familiar with, I, I look at, at the other languages and I, I see what the principles are that they've used to design them. Some of those are good principles. Um, some of them I think are not so good. So I try to borrow the good principles. Uh, so that, that tends to be the level on which I, I work. Uh, 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 in terms of what I'm actually have programmed in in Anger, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I've programmed in Lisp, in C, Pascal, um, uh, 
a little bit of ADA before there were any ADA compilers. Uh, <laughs> so I guess that, that really doesn't count. Um, uh, you know, a, a dabbling in the other modern languages. But uh, uh, other than that, I, I, I actually wrote Perl so I wouldn't have to program in C. And, you know, I still do about half and half of my programming in Perl 5 and Perl 6. So. That, that was my other question. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Um, I was wondering uh, if you could discuss uh, your inspiration for what has become the Test Anything protocol. Hmm. Well, I, I didn't really call it a protocol. Uh, I, it's just that, uh, you know, so I, I did not invent the acronym TAP. Uh, I, I just, when Perl 1 came out, um, you know, I just had some, some I needed some way of, of doing uh, testing, and, and I just said, well, okay, print OK1, print OK2, print OK3, and the test script read that. You know, there was no test harness or anything like that. It was just the script, the test script read those things back in and, you know, essentially did the same thing. Uh, and it wasn't even really, you know, you talk about regression testing these days, and we, you know, test all the language features. In those days, it was more... Uh, what you call acceptance testing. Um, so it's like, um, uh, as, as I was mentioning earlier, with the configure and testing all these features, um, we expected Perl to show up on many different architectures. It's not like today where there's, you know, there's Atom and there's 386 and not much else. Um, so... You know, there, were, there were hundreds of different architectures and operating systems, and, and you know, it was just big free for, for all back then. And so um, we expected people to port Perl to different architectures, and that's why we broke it down by features instead of by which operating system. But that means that Perl was going to run in a lot of places that you know, maybe didn't quite implement the feature the same way as, as, as we expected it to. So... Uh, the testing at that point, a little OK1, OK2, that was mostly to make sure that, that it had the right semantics on the machine that was going to, not, not uh, to test the language itself. Uh, you know, and I d never really did much more with that. I was quite amazed at what everyone has done with the, uh, the, the whole tap thing since then. It's uh, been really cool <laughs> watching other people take that and turn it into something real. It was just a little teeny seed of an idea, but. Hi, Larry. Um, I know you're a scientist uh, as well as I am. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, did, didn't you notice in the science corner I was sort of hanging back there? But you were over there. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, of course, we all know what Perl does well. Um, and it can also do some other things. Uh, but other than, other than BioPerl, um, Perl is usually not thought of for science, and is there something we can do to bring Perl's awareness back into the scientific community? And Python's got it pretty well locked up right now, and we need. Is there something you can think of, or that would would help push this mm -hmm. a little bit that way again? Uh, that's that's a hard question. <laughs> that's a marketing question. Uh, uh, you must have noticed that the first uh, thing on my badge was said marketing. Uh, you, you realize that all those things on the badge are lies. Uh, uh, I mean, that, that's, that's the first, first stage of marketing, right? right? But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have a good answer for that yet. It's, a, it's, a good, it's an excellent question, and sometimes excellent questions are better than than lousy answers. Uh, you know, I, of course, you know, I, I have to say that, that uh, some of what we've been doing with Perl 6 in the design, it's not implemented yet, is to build in some of this uh, PDL kind of ideas into the way that arrays and objects will work. But, um, you know, we're, we're not quite there with Perl 6 yet. Um, that, that'll help a little, but that's not a marketing answer. That's a techie answer. So I, um, I, I do do a little bit of marketing from time to time, but I'm not sure what the right answer is on that is yet. Uh, first question from the other side. 
Ah, okay. Hello? <laughs> Get a crick out on my neck here. Um, you know, it's, it's a fantastically well attended YAPSI. Um, and I was just wondering how you, how you, if you're surprised at all at both the longevity of Pearl or the apparent renaissance of interest in you know, the mm -hmm. last couple of years. Um, well, uh, I, I'm not really surprised at the longevity of Pearl. Uh, uh, way back in the early days of Pearl, I, I said, I, I have some quote out there that, that, that basically said, if you want to design something that lasts for 10 years, do this. If you want something that lasts 20 years, do this. If you want something that lasts 40 years, design a computer language. Um, I mean, th this was more of a negative uh, observation about things like Fortran. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, so, yeah, I, I, I kind of knew that, that languages tend to, to hang on. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we started off the Perl 6 thing, we had a little, you know, kind of different expectations as to uh, how quickly we'd make progress on that. Uh, you may have noticed. Um, but... Uh, one thing we, we can say, though, is that the reason we felt secure in, you know, taking a, a, a research step on Perl 6 was because Perl 5 was so stable, and by, by which I don't mean dead, <laughs> you know, not, not the biological uh, sense. So, um, but, uh, you know, we, we expected it to, to keep on going more or less as it was. But then um, it's been really... Uh, Amazing uh, that to see some of the uh, original energy that, that uh, went into the, the, the Perl 6 uh, effort then um, uh, sort of bounce back into the Perl 5 community and uh, result in a, a great deal of, uh, of uh, creative work there as well. Um, you know, some of it can be blamed on the Perl 6 effort, but a lot of it is independent of that. Uh, you know. Moose, uh, Moose's object system uh, is, is a good part of that, and, and that's closely related to Perl 6's object system. But there's other things that, that uh, you know, have uh, been invented along the way uh, for Perl 5 as well. And, it, you know, it's livelier today than it ever has been, and I, I think that's really cool. Uh, so in that sense, uh, you know, I, I did not expect to see quite as much more new life in the Perl 5 community, uh, as we have, and that that is a that's a good way to be surprised. <laughs> so, uh, Larry, speaking about uh, new life in, in Perl 5, what are your thoughts on um, you know the, the Perl 5 porters list? I don't know if you still watch or not, but um, you know Ricardo's talks were he was talking about you know building more consensus on that and ways to do that. So I was wondering if you had advice for you know, pump gang or people on P5P about how to, how to build consensus and your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> um, you know, we, the, the Perl 5 Porters has gone through uh, some rough times in the past and some, some not so rough times. And um, I, I think that uh, when things have gotten better, it's been because people have, have uh, felt empowered to, to take charge of the community and, you know, call people out when they're, they're getting out of line. Uh, it's when nobody feels like they can do that that, that uh, things tend to get out of hand. Um, and that, that has, that's been a, you know, an, again, one of those things that's partly we started thinking about uh, in the year 2000 when we said that, you know, we'd have a rewrite of the community. And some of that rewrite of the community has, uh, has um, uh, been healthy all around. Um, as for the, the, you know, the actual uh, consensus, you know, that, that's, I, I am uh, no longer actively dictating <laughs> Perl 5 Porters. Um, I, I, I read threads occasionally when they're referred to me. Uh, but I don't, uh, you know, my my uh, my brain is shrinking as I get older, and Perl six keeps expanding, and um, so you know, there's uh, I I try to specialize a little more in the Perl six end of things uh, these days. 
Um, but, um, you know, I, I do occasionally give advice back to, uh, to uh, the powers that be in, in the Pearl Five land. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we've seen some, some interesting experiments over the last 10 years in, in some of the things that have been borrowed back from the Pearl Six design. Some of them have worked out very well. Some that looked like they were going to work out well did not work out well because the assumptions baked into Pearl Five uh, were baked in when I was uh, younger and knew, knew, knew different things. <laughs> Um, so uh, uh, we're we're learning to recognize a little bit more uh, the, the the nature of the ideas that that can come back and and help uh, you know out out of the research land ivory tower land and uh, help uh, Pearl Five and uh, and sort of you know if if ideas depend too much on the the type system that Pearl Six has then they probably aren't going to work so well. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, there's there's consensus about short-term things, and then consensus about long-term directions, and uh, those kind of have to be negotiated separately, I guess. I'm starting to wander. <laughs> hey, Larry. Long time no see. Anyway, uh, so. Um, I'm really excited at this conference for what I'm seeing about the progress of Rakuto and, and the other implementations of Perl 6. I'm also really excited about the amount of effort that's gone in to really keep Perl 5 moving forward and becoming more modern, partially inspired by Perl 6, but partially just people getting in there, yeah. cleaning up stuff that's been a mess for years. Mm -hmm. I'm excited by the people that I'm talking to that are already using Perl in all sorts of applications and being very happy and satisfied and progressing with that. What I'm confused about on two levels is, and I'd like to see what your thoughts are on these, is there's been job postings in the LA, Pearl, or LA uh, era, Los Angeles area for months, it seems, maybe years, that have gone unfulfilled for mid-range mid Pearl programmers. Mm -hmm. There's been, pro you know, Booking.com, I already mentioned them again, but yeah, you're still looking for 20 Pearl programmers, right? Constantly. Uh, so there's a lot of desire to expand, but we seem to be resource short in that direction. Mm -hmm. And how do we get more people? Um, oh, I, also want, I also want to say that I, I assert that there's more Perl programming happening today than there was 10 years ago, on an absolute number. Yeah. But I think it's also a smaller part of the pie overall of IT and, and mm -hmm. web dev and everything else that's going on. How do we get more slots at OSCON, more people coming out of school wanting to do Perl, mm -hmm. and get it back to the excitement? that we had in the original days. And I think, maybe I'm just being nostalgic, but I think there's a huge amount of opportunity here. And I know a lot of people here I, that I've talked to here have that sort of sense too, that we're seeing great things in Pearl, but it's just not getting out there to mm -hmm. bring in new blood. How do we do that? Well, you know, the game changed over the last 10, 20 years. Uh, when Pearl first came out, it didn't, there wasn't Ruby and there wasn't Python. Uh, there weren't, weren't the, you know, there wasn't JavaScript. Um, there are a lot more communities arguing for Mindshare these days. So you've got to compete on the level of, um, of uh, you know, what the benefits are that the other communities aren't offering. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, a walk in the park anymore to, to convince people of that. Um, but I think that uh, you know, making people more aware of the the modernization of Perl uh, can only help. Um, on uh, on a, a longer term level, you know, we we need to figure out how to get to, you know into the schools and even the grade schools. That's um, you know uh, <laughs> one of the reasons that uh, the uh, 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 logo for uh, Pearl Six is a, a butterfly. <laughs> is that uh, you know I, I I would like Pearl eventually to uh, be appealing to uh, six-year-old girls. Uh, um, it, it has the added benefit uh, that it scares away the old grumpy men who are. <laughs> uh, 
who are scared that someone will think they're a six-year-old girl. Um, I, 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 my, my man head is not so easily threatened, I guess. Uh, it, it's actually worked pretty well that way. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, so, yeah, I, I have to, uh, you know, give a strong second to, uh, to uh, what, Schwern, uh, what Schwern said uh, uh, at the beginning of our, our time here. You know, let, let's be a little intentional. This, this is just a little intentional in that direction of, uh, you know, going after those demographics that are maybe not exactly the same as us. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Was there another part to your question I just forgot? <laughs> uh, well, actually, just one additional thought. Uh, one of the things that scares me about the number of job postings for Pearl, I know it should excite me that there's that many job postings, but if they go unfulfilled for a long time, I know hiring managers are going to say, I can't get Pearl resources. Are we going to start losing even existing installations to other languages mm -hmm. simply because there aren't enough people out there? Are there things that individuals can do here that you would be aware of that, like, to start introducing more people to Pearl? I mean, should we be all going out and finding a friend, teaching them Pearl? Would that be one way to do it? Or, I mean, do you have any ideas mm -hmm. on that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the young people these days, you know, they, they, they want that hipster thing, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not real good at that hipster thing. I'm okay with six-year-old girl things, but um, so, you know, uh, you know pe people like uh, Miyagawa Sensei, uh, you know, they, 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 they're much better at that sort of thing. Um, so uh, be more like him. Uh. Hey, Larry. So um, I ran a five-day hardware hackathon here that was pretty well received. Thanks for those of coming out. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, which, of course, the Pearl influence is obvious, um, but uh, you're also to blame even further because for your X10 talk back many years yeah. ago. E even though my X10 stuff was still in the airport when yeah. I gave the talk, yeah. <laughs> so. I see a real, you know, to kind of follow up on Larry's, a little, or to Randall's comment a little bit, is obviously I see a need in the whole Internet of Things. I see Perl could be used in scientific computing, not at the data level, at the collecting it, at the instrumentation level. It, I mean, I can just see Perl scripting entire testing labs and all kinds of stuff, which really excites me, tying into our TAP framework, all that. Mm -hmm. How do you see the future of the Internet of Things and Pearl's place in it? And have you played with your Arduino that I suspect you're supposed to have? Um, yeah, I've kind of been trying to avoid that uh, because I know how addictive it will be. <laughs> um, and, you know, you know that, that's, there's that shrinking brain and the growing problem, problem again. So... Uh, um, yeah, I want to, um, and uh, and yes, in fact, um, you know, I, 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 you know, if I go here and, and uh, uh, assuming I'm up here, okay, uh, okay, I, I I can tell if somebody's rung my doorbell. Yeah. <laughs> Um, though uh, G3, I believe, is the motion sensor that's halfway out my front walk, as opposed to one that's all the way out or, or at the front porch. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. so you think this might be going somewhere? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> For sure. I want to follow up on the um, uh, science question with, mm -hmm. with Pearl. Um, so as a um, scientist who uses Pearl, um, sometimes, I mean, usually I, li I like to concentrate on the science and, you know, write program, use programmer efficiency, and um, usually that works great. Sometimes it breaks. Yes. Um, so what's your pain point? Well, and then, you know, do I have to 
really worry about memory management? Do I have to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do have, instead of the convenience of a hash if I'm filling up memory with that, blah, 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 you know? So, so I guess my, my thought about, I guess, Perl 6 and science a few years from now is, um, uh, what will what will I want to be doing a few years from now? What data am I going to get? What mm -hmm. if, what process am I am I going to want to do? What questions am I going to want to answer? And how well will Perl six handle those? So it's mm -hmm. kind of parallel to your response to that of of looking at um, say parallel processing. I mean, what will machines be like a few years from now? But the other side of that is what will the problems be like a few years from now and, and, and will the language support those? So yes. I mean, this isn't really a question, but maybe um, to bring it to a question is, you know, are, are you having those sorts of dialogues in Perl 6 about, you know, where is science going? What kinds of questions might mm -hmm. people want to program to, yeah. to answer? That is, of course, a, a fuzzier thing to to predict, I think, than, than where the, arch the hardware is going in the next five, ten years. But, um, yeah, I mean, cer certainly um, it's been, s if not directly, it's been discussed on a meta level, which is to say um, we're, we're not entirely sure what the problems we want to solve in, in five or ten years are, but we sort of know something about the nature of a language that will let you um, uh, tweak it into the problem-solving thing that you want. Um, and a great deal of the, the thought that's gone into the, the design of Perl 6 has been, you know, what, what ways did Perl fall down in extensibility? I mean, Perl 5 is, you know, fabulously extensible, except, you know, source filters were sort of the wrong way to do it. Uh, and th there were various ways in which it wasn't, just wasn't quite right. And so a, a lot of the thinking in, in Perl 6 has been, well, how do you make domain-specific languages easier? How do you um, uh, localize the uh, tweaks you need for a particular problem solver uh, such that uh, you, can, you can then compose problem solvers and solve newer problems even uh, without them interfering with each other? Um, I mean, that's the problem with source filters. You've, write one source filter and you write a different source filter, you try to compose them and it blows up. And that's because the granularity is a little wrong. So uh, there's been a lot of meta discussion about, you know, what's the right granularity? What peg do you hang each piece of data on that's the right peg and not the wrong peg, uh, such that it's handy when you want it and not in the way when you don't want it? These sort of things, um, I mean, it's... it's, it's uh, we are not smart enough to know what the problems will be in, in 10 years. If you have input on what, where you think the problems are going to be in 10 years, uh, we're all ears. Because um, this whole, this whole uh, Perl 6 design is very iterative spiral thing. Right now, we, we had the initial design, and we got several initial implementations, and we're getting a lot of feedback right now as to what's easy to implement or what's possible uh, and, and wanted. <laughs> in some cases. Um, and um, I'm doing a lot of work on, on sites like, like Rosetta Code, where we have hundreds of uh, running examples of Perl 6, in order to try to feel some of that very, uh, you know, what are the kinds of problems that have been done and ought to be doable uh, with Perl 6 easily. Um, but, uh, you know, we need feedback on every level. It's, it's, it's obviously it's a it's a, a fractal process, where uh, you know there's feedback on short-term little things, and we also need lots of feedback on on people's ideas of where things are going to be in five or ten years, uh, and then that in turn will direct uh, you know how we how we uh, continue to extend uh, and extend the extensibility of. Perl 6 and Perl 5 uh, in whatever ways they can. Um, I, don't know if I, I don't know if that's a satisfactory answer to you, uh, but uh, I, I am personally, um, uh, I've always 
loved everything to do with science. I mean, I, I have subscribed to scientific magazines since I was a little shorter. Um, <laughs> and uh, read them avidly. But uh, uh, so uh, at least on an emotional level, I, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> uh, and uh, especially if it helps me live a few longer, a few years longer down the road, uh, I'm starting to think about those sorts of things. <laughs> uh, so, you know, any, any ideas that you s have not seen expressed yet that um, you think we should be thinking about? Well, I, you know, I'm not a visionary either. About this. <laughs> um, but, I mean, what, what I do know is um, stuff that um, is, is hard to do. Or, you know, I try it the, the easy way and, well, gosh, that didn't work, so maybe I need to memory map files or I need to, uh -huh. you know, use disk space for sorting or something like that. Or I need to uh, – I have to rewrite the code so that the hash okay. keys don't fill up memory. I mean, I have those those things that are hard, and then I see that, well, gosh, uh, you know, now I'm uh, a few years ago it was like um, uh, gigabytes of data, and now it's terabytes of data, mm -hmm. and many different experiments, and the the um, you know that this so this problem is going to keep keep growing that yes. the Moore's law. The, the rate of increase in, in data and um, at least the biological sciences seems to be growing faster than the um, mm -hmm. at, uh, than uh, you know uh, storage and memory is mm -hmm. growing. So. so yeah, um, what I hear you saying is is um, you you worked at a, a on a particular you know built with a particular built-in abstraction that Perl has already, and then it kind of ran out of steam. And you couldn't switch to a different model underneath and keep the same abstraction, and so it was painful to like yeah. do do it a different way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think we we're getting some understanding of of how better to decouple the the uh, the interfaces the, the the APIs to what you want to do, and how it chooses how pluggable it is underneath. Mm -hmm. um, that also is, and we have a fancy technical term in, uh, in uh, Perl 6 called representational polymorphism. But that basically means is, you know, we don't tell you how your objects are, you know, where they are, how their data is stored. You just call the methods and the representation figures out where it really is. Yeah. Um, so that kind of pluggability as we can uh, introduce it into, into both uh, Perl 6, where it already is, uh, and into Perl 5, where, where the ongoing work in, in uh, putting meta-object stuff in there um, may, may help it. Uh, Perl 5 to also be more pluggable on that level. Uh, we're, we're recognizing that, that some of the pain is just making assumptions that there's only one way to do things, and that's sort of a non-Perl thing to do. We, we don't want to assume there's only one way to do things. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Can we take one more from the other side of the room? Uh, I've used Perl on a, a lot of different machines. I've used it um, on HP 1000 and on an IBM mainframe and on a, a Windows machine. Um, when am I going to be able to use it on my Android phone? <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. Uh, is anybody porting a C compiler to? Uh, and well, there's there's a there's a Perl Foundation grant. Oh, yeah. Right now. Okay. Cross okay. Cross. Okay. Well, there's some work on that uh, in getting Perl five, and um, certainly the you know Perl 6's various implementations are are thinking about how how to have different backends that can uh, run on. One of the things we realized at the very beginning of the Perl 6 effort was that we had one reference implementation, and it was in C. And that did not necessarily port very easily to something like a JVM or uh, a CLR uh, or these days a phone. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've been thinking about this for a number of years now. Uh, did you want to add something to that? To that?
Okay. Yeah, Pat Patrick says that the, probably the next uh, VM that they will uh, target uh, uh, after Parrot is uh, JVM. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is my first YAPSI, and I just want to say thank you to everybody for such... This has been a very high-quality, kick-ass experience. Um, and for people who are looking to attract more people to Pearl, that's it, right? It's just very fulfilling to participate in something like this. Um, my question is about the Raptor. <laughs> um, MST, where are you? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's on the shirts. It's on the web. Mm -hmm. It appeals to my inner Janeway. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what... Uh, before there's competing versions of where that came from, what do you remember or know about that? Oh, I don't know. I, I was clueless. I got a blog post telling you where it comes from. Uh -huh. blog. Oh, you have a blog? Yeah. yeah. Go to mvk.pr.ly. Go look in back for Velociraptor. You'll find out it was originally a Damien joke, and Larry made a comment that I pulled out of the IRC log about it. Yeah, originally, the, yeah, my, my original take on the joke was, you know, uh, a Velociraptor is, uh, you know, always going to lose in the long run to an Acceleraptor, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so we're running down on time, so I'll, I'll try to shorten my original question. <laughs> but um, I've uh, been working with a lot of the very computer science-y, academic, mathy wathy types My condolences. Uh, over the past uh, couple of years. And um, in the process, though, I've gotten to learn uh, Lisp and some Haskell mm -hmm. and some of the little, some of the theories and whatnot behind that. The thing is, I don't really see Perl in that space, in that computer science space. And indeed, when I have to go down to the metal and actually think about algorithms, um, you know, Perl's great for high-level algorithms. It doesn't seem to be great for low-level algorithms. But maybe I'm kind of wrong. I just don't see it being taught in the curriculums, computer science schools, um, you know. And uh, I was wondering what you see between the relationship between computer science and mm -hmm. Perl, uh, both Perl 5 and Perl 6. Sure. Um, excellent question. Um, you know, as I as I fessed up, I, I mostly came at this from a linguistics background and um, felt free to uh, at the beginning to ignore uh, uh, many of the uh, known results of computer science um, uh, and of uh, you know had to uh, remake the same mistakes that uh, Lisp made in in some cases. Um, and it's kind of funny to seeing PHP uh, following in Perl's footsteps on that. <laughs> Uh, only more slowly. Uh, but um, with, with Perl 5, uh, you know, I, I, I started uh, reawakening to my uh, – I also did study some, some computer science along with my linguistics. And um, I realized that um, – or began to realize that, yeah, you, you can actually have a sound technical foundation underneath – and start putting some of the uh, some of these highfalutin comp sci concepts in, as long as you don't tell people you did that. Um, so when Perl five came out and we had anonymous subroutines, well that's cool. You can just you can take a reference to them. Well okay, that you know it seems like their feature is that they're anonymous. Well, but what their real feature is is that they are closures and they close over their lexical scopes. But we, we weren't going to explain that to you at that point because you weren't you wasn't ready to hear it. Um, you'll, uh, I might also add you'll be pleased to know that you know while working with those types and coding Perl, um, they were just floored. You know you have closures. I didn't know you had closures. Wait, you have a symbol table to munch to munch. You know. Yeah. Um, they did push macros in my face, and we will get them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, several years ago I was at the uh, Hopple, the History of Programming Languages, and I, I was on a panel to do scripting languages. 
uh, you know, I, I talked about the scripting languages, but the functional programming guy got up and he said, hey, here are the unsuccessful functional programming languages. And he Lisp, Scheme. Uh, I think he had Haskell there. Um, and uh, he, he said, here are the successful functional programming languages, Perl, Ruby. Um, so there's some, some recognition there uh, that, that uh, Perl actually is or can be used as a functional programming language in, in some sense. So, um, yeah, we really, did, we really did it right with the, the closures. Um, but um, so we, we kind of learned, yeah, we, we, can, we can try to keep a language um, that is accessible to, uh, uh, you know, people of, uh, you know, you know, sort of the, I, I, I call my, my theory of design the, the, the bare, bare, very little brain uh, approach because th there's some ways in which I identify much more with the, 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 uh, the basic programmers than the uh, Haskell programmers. Um, so there, there's ways in which we can help people come at it from that direction without necessarily compromising the, uh, the, the underpinnings that uh, make for uh, good hygiene, as it were. Uh, so, you know, Perl 6 will, in fact, have hygienic macros. Um, you know, that's, that's the other extreme from source filters. Uh, it means you write macros with the, uh, the abstract syntax tree, and it, it does the right thing. Uh, there are um, other concepts that we have uh, snuck into uh, Perl 6 with, without trying to inflict them on the people who are not ready for them. Uh, lazy lists. Um, we, we had some discussion about this. You know, if you assign a, a, an array in uh, Perl 6, it still does it eagerly because that's what a Perl 5 programmer expects. There, but there's ways of making it not calculate things until you need to, and then, then you can talk about lists that are infinitely long, and it's really handy sometimes. Uh, and to... To allow the uh, abstract associations to be made right uh, underneath, uh, while um, uh, keeping it, you know, a, a, a normal language that uh, six-year-old girls might want to learn, uh, without falling into the trap that most functional programming languages fall into, where you kind of have to know the whole thing, uh, or, or a lot of it, you know, a six-year-old girl is, is not going to learn Haskell. <laughs> yeah. Not not very quickly. Um, well, maybe a really smart one, smarter than me. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, that that is that is one of the pushes for for the Perl six design that we you know there's lots of things there that can probably be backported uh, to Perl five as well. Um, on the other hand, the object oriented stuff you've already seen a lot of the fruit of of, of uh, having a you know, uh, things like Moose and uh, some of the uh, uh, dispatch mechanisms that, that you have available with that. And that, that also is, is uh, an area where we are trying to, uh, you know, it's really two different cultures in computer science. There's the whole stateless culture of functional programming and the whole stateful uh, culture of object-oriented programming. You know, and they, they really fight in... in, in, in uh, most of the world, but um, you know, we're, we're, we saw that we were starting to actually be able to combine them with Perl 5, and we're continuing that process with Perl 6, and hopefully that similar integration of those two paradigms uh, will continue to improve in both, both Perl 5 and Perl 6. And I want to thank you in general. Uh -huh.